ในงาน Google I/O 2014ปีนี้นะคะมีคนที่มาร่วมงานแล้วก็สวม Google Glass แบบนี้เดินเต็มไปหมดทั้งงานเลยค่ะเพราะฉะนั้นวันนี้นะคะเราก็จะมาพูดกันเรื่อง Google Glass ดีกว่าค่ะแต่ว่าก่อนจะไปคุยเรื่อง Glass ในตอนนี้นะคะสุชิงอยากจะพาทุกคนไปดูก่อนว่าประวัติศาสตร์ความเป็นมาของ Glass เนี่ยมันเป็นมายังไงกว่าจะมาเป็น Google Glass ที่หน้าตาแบบนี้ได้ค่ะเราอยู่กับคุณคริสเดลนะคะเป็น Head of Communication ของ Google ซึ่งจะมาคุยกันเกี่ยวกับรายละเอียด Google Glass ค่ะ All right. So the history of Google Glass. How did it all happen? Sure. Well, you know, I think. I mean, it probably started off a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, here. There's a. There's a, what they're calling the, the virtual reality high, uh, flight helmet uh, yep. that they created way back in 1991. Mm -hmm. So this is. This is not Google Glass, but this is an ancestor, the great, great, great grandfather. Uh, the inspiration of Google, of Google Glass. Yeah, in, to a certain extent. So a lot of the people. Who worked in the very early days on these head-mounted mm -hmm. displays uh, ended up coming over to Google and, and yep. having advisory roles in um, in the early developments of Glass. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, um, we started Glass actually as a project to do virtual reality, mm -hmm. augmented reality. And one of the things that we learned early on was that. Virtual reality or augmented reality yep. wasn't necessarily what people needed, and mm -hmm. in fact, to a certain extent, people today feel more overwhelmed with technology mm -hmm. and more inundated by te technology right. than ever before. So, as Glass kind of evolved, the philosophy that underpinned Glass evolved mm -hmm. as well, um, and essentially got to the point where we felt like we wanted to reinvent. The way people use technology. Mm -hmm. um, I think the smartphone and the tablet and, and all sorts of the things, personal computer, the laptop, have done wonderful things, and they're great in specific moments. Mm -hmm. But when I'm out and about, when I want to, you know, go somewhere or I'm on vacation, like I want my head up. I want to be looking at things. I want to be making eye contact with people. Oh. And so we went from this kind of model, which is just over the eyes and sort of well, looking. For this one, you can't go out anywhere. Right, exactly, you can't go out <laughs> anywhere. And so we. Decided that we purposely moved the display to be above the eye, uh -huh. so not only you could make eye contact, but you would get these glanceable notifications that would give you just the right technology that you needed mm -hmm. at just the right moment, but then get out of your way so you can kind of spend time with whatever it is that you want to be doing. Yeah. It's um, very futuristic. Something that you would only see in sci-fi movies I mean, before Glass came sure. out. Yeah, I mean, I think so. But I, again, I think that um, we've. Come used to this sort of mentality where we have yeah. a phone, or we're and we at have a to look down all the time. Yeah, exactly. Or we're looking down. I mean, I was. Um, I have a soon-to-be six-year-old son, oh. and I was at one of his first performances, a mm -hmm. dance performance last week, and the entire audience of parents were holding up smartphones and, and mm -hmm. tablets, and in doing that, they were actually. Missing the moment, right. they were experiencing the moment through their piece of technology mm -hmm. rather than just being there. And so, what was a wonderful thing for me with class is that I could just capture that mm -hmm. moment, but still feel like I was experiencing it firsthand, and it mm -hmm. wasn't being intermediated by this physical display between me and the rest of the world. Right. And so, that's kind of at the center of what class is trying to do. We really want to get technology out of the way, mm -hmm. to really, you know, have technology built for people, not necessarily devices, and. Again, this is this is an early prototype. It's a far cry from this. Mm -hmm. It's a far cry from a lot of these things. Right. Um, but the progress that we've made in the last two years, I think, has frankly been phenomenal. We started as two smartphone motherboards, hot glue mm -hmm. gunned to a wireframe uh, pair of glasses, yep. and we got it to this point in the course of about two years. And wow, so to that's me, fast. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it took 20 years to get. You know, or even more than well, yeah, about 20 years to get from this to an early prototype. Mm -hmm. Took another two years to go from that prototype to this. I think the way glass will evolve in the next sort of you know, two, four, right. five years is going to be really exciting to watch. Okay, um, so the latest model comes with frame that people with eye problems can still use Google Glass yep. with frames. Is that a way of trying to blend people who wear Google Glass in? Among the society, I mean, if you just wear the uh, original Google Glass without frames, you might be 
too outstanding? Yeah, you might well, look like a robot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we found like with our explorers, like some of them love to stand out. And so yeah. for them, they like the band, they like to, you know, they like right. people coming up and saying, what, is, what does that do? Can I yeah, get I would love that kind of attention yeah, too. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? So some people love the attention. Um, for someone like me, mm -hmm. I actually like the frames. Um, it, it's really comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. I also think it connects it with a piece of technology. Yep. Frankly, what I would argue is the most successful piece of wearable technology in history, which is glasses. For people wearing Google Glass, uh, what are the do's and don'ts that you would like to recommend them? Well, I think the, the biggest do is just get out there and explore. Mm -hmm. I mean, we call our explorers explorers for a reason. Right? Yep. We, th this is new technology. This is a new way for people to use technology. So just go out there, enjoy yourself. Like travel, uh, you know, spend time with your kids, give mm -hmm. us tons of feedback, like what are the things that we can do better? I mean, this is, as I said, this is a prototype um, mm -hmm. and it's still relatively early days. Yep. Um, but in my mind, wearable computing, whether it's on your wrist or something you wear above your eyes, it has enormous potential that's really inspiring. In terms of don'ts, I think, I think the number one thing is just new technology is always gonna raise new issues mm -hmm. and, and be willing and patient to sit down with people who may be you know, wary of glass or don't understand it and just explain what it does and doesn't do. Right. Um, because there are so few devices out there, um, it's hard for people to understand it because mm -hmm. they don't have first-hand experience. I think what I've found is, in, in, you know, particularly in the last year, is that when people have first-hand experience of what glass is and what it does, they get really excited about mm -hmm. it. Um, so I think be patient, be understanding, be empathetic, um, and, 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 all of that stuff will make your experience with glass that much better and it'll make people's yeah. experience around you better. หมดเวลาของรายการโซเชียลฟีดประจำวันนี้แล้วค่ะคุณผู้ชมสามารถติดตามรายการนี้ได้ใหม่ในครั้งหน้าอนนี้สู้ชิงจิตสุภาฉินลาไปก่อนสวัสดีค่ะ